Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk about the Season 4 patch notes. I typically don't talk about the patch notes in my videos, but I decided just for the fun of it to do it this time. As you guys may already know, Season 4 will start on April 11th, and it will also bring a new support hero. Unfortunately, we still don't know who that hero is, but we do have these patch notes, so let's get into it. In anticipation of our newest support hero to be added to Overwatch 2, we have made some substantial changes to many of the current Overwatch heroes that are faltering in the meta. The beginning of Season 4 patch will have many significant buffs and plenty of quality of life changes to most of the roster. So let's get into the hero changes. For Ana, Sleep Dart, teammates can no longer wake up sleeping targets. The devs say that Sleep Dart having a shorter duration was good for the overall crowd control in Overwatch 2. However, with more chip damage like Ramatra's Annihilation, sleeping targets have been accidentally been woken up more. So this change will hopefully create less frustration with teammates accidentally waking up your sleeping targets. I personally do not think this is the greatest change ever because now your teammates will just be able to kill your sleeping targets and I think that will just make Honest Sleep Dart way too broken. So we'll have to see. Hopefully the other changes kind of counteract it, but I think that's overall a bad change. Next up is Ash, the Viper. Aim down sight damage increased from 75 to 80. The devs say that pro scrims have shown that Widowmaker is the dominant hitscan in the current meta. This small buff will allow Ash to break important thresholds again in order to keep up with her sniper counterparts. 5 damage doesn't seem like that much, but then you realize with damage boost, Ash can one shot targets again. Back in Overwatch 1, Ash and Mercy was just a dominant combo because you can have the fire rate of Ash but the damage of Widowmaker and just one shot 200 HP heroes. Again, this is overall, I think, a terrible change. If you weren't there back then, Ash being able to just damage boost headshot people was very oppressive. It was kind of high skill also though, but I personally think this will dominate the meta and it's going to be very annoying to deal with. However, if you like Ash, I guess if you find a Mercy Pocket, you'll be able to climb really easily. Next up is Baptiste to Immortality Field. Saves from Immortality Field will now count towards play of the game. The devs basically say that support heroes don't get play of the game that often, so they're making it so saves will count more towards play of the game. My theory on why they're doing this overall change is because the new support hero is probably going to be one of those heroes that don't do a lot of damage. However, they probably get a lot of saves. So probably just to help the new hero get into the game, they added it so saves are more important to the play of the game. Next up is my boy Bastion. His hitbox size and player model size have been decreased by 10%. The devs say that Bastion is a bit too easy to kill with his low mobility, so rather than giving him more HP, they decided to shrink his hitbox and shrink his player model to match the size. I personally am not against this change. I don't really think it's going to do much to help Bastion, especially because he still is a very big character, but it's nice seeing them giving Bastion a little bit of love and giving him a small buff. Next up is Brigitte, and I know somebody is going to be happy. Shield Bash will now stun for 0.75 seconds. Shield Bash damage has been reduced from 50 to 20. Brigitte underperforms in higher ranks due to a lack of utility. Bringing back her stun while also nerfing the damage should allow Brig players to be more potent on the battlefield. I think this is a massive buff. Being able to stun again as Brig is insane. Honestly, the 30 damage nerf is going to be nothing compared to being able to stun people again because you're most likely going to get another swing in anyways, and hitting a giant flail right after that stun is also going to do a ton more damage. So to me, this is just a straight up net buff for Brigitte, and it's going to be a little insane because they seem to be adding a few more stuns back to the game. So this is going to be a little nutty. It's going to feel a little bit more like Overwatch 1 in Season 4. I'm actually kind of for it, but at the same time, Brigitte getting her stun back, I'm not completely sure about that. Next up is Cassidy. Cassidy's health was increased from 225 to 250. Damage reduction from combat roll has been removed and his name has been updated to McCassidy. This is already a very interesting change. The dev comment. Similar to his fellow cow partner, he has been overshadowed by a certain blue sniper. Having a small increase in his health should allow him to peek at enemy snipers without getting instantly killed. Personally, I think it's a skill not to walk into a Widowmaker's line of sight. To compensate, we removed his damage reduction during combat roll. Also, to avoid confusion with old Overwatch 1 players, we updated Cassidy's name to McCassidy to ease both new and old Overwatch players to the hero. It's kind of weird to see McCassidy in a different place on the hero select screen. However, I think giving Cassidy or sorry, McCassidy, 25 more health 
is kind of just broken. The goal with this change seems to be so he can poke out at a Widowmaker and shoot her, but you just don't want to do that anyways. And the damage reduction from combat roll was kind of nice, you could survive a pulse bomb from it. However, it feels like it's going to make him good against the bad characters and make him not much different from the already strong DPS. So I don't think this is a good change at all. The name I don't really care about, but they should revert this instantly. Diva, Defense Matrix, can now eat Sigma's rock. The devs say that they want Diva to be more consistent with what she can eat with her Defense Matrix, so they made it so Diva can eat Sigma's rock. I don't really mind this change. Diva can already eat stuff like Orisa's Javelin, so eating Sigma's rock is not that far fetched. Next up is Doomfist, and they fixed the bug where blocking during Seismic Slam will launch the players farther. So what they mean by this is when you Seismic Slam and then instantly block, you'll actually go farther than if you just Seismic Slam normally or Seismic Slam then cancel it. And so they said this was a bug and they fixed it. I don't mind too much that they did this, but it's kind of weird to nerf him in this way. I mean, you literally have to use an entire block cooldown in order to go a small distance farther. So it's a weird thing to fix. I hope they kind of undo it and make it a feature kind of like Mercy Super Jump, but it's not going to be the worst thing ever, hopefully. It might just feel a little slower to play Doomfist. Next up is Echo with a giant, giant nerf for some reason. When Echo dies in duplication, she will no longer respawn. I've been wanting this forever, because I don't really like the idea of how Echo can just die, but not die. I kind of like the idea of Echo being able to duplicate whoever she wants, but if she dies in it, she just dies and has to respawn. So even though I don't think this is a good change because I think she's going to be way too underpowered, especially with the hitscan buffs that have been shown earlier, even though I kind of like the idea of Echo being able to die in duplication, I think she's going to get absolutely trashed on in Season 4. So if you like playing Echo, good freaking luck. Next up is Genji with actually a very interesting change. Dragon Blade duration has been reduced from 6 to 5 seconds. Damage per swing has been increased from 110 to 150. The devs mentioned that Genji is kind of reliant on nano boost to get a good Dragon Blade off. They decided to make it so Genji can swing and then dash and one shot combo a 200 HP hero without needing nano boost. To compensate they made it so the duration is much shorter. I personally think that they overtuned Genji a little bit because there's basically no way like a Ana can survive a Genji dragon blading on top of her now. I mean of course you can sleep him but if you miss. However it looks like they're just kind of buffing all the DPS across the board so I'm not too much against Genji being able to do this but I also think it's just going to be a little bit too broken. Anyways if you like Genji go have fun. Next up is the other Shimada. Storm arrow count has been increased from 5 to 7 and dragon strike arrow damage increased from 125 to 300. Basically when dragon strike is launched an arrow is actually fired and then the dragon spawns. That arrow will do 125 damage normally but now it will do 300 on a body shot. That means that I think it can one shot most tanks if you headshot. They say that they wanted to buff Hanzo just like they buffed the other characters, and it looks like the Dragon Strike change was made so when Hanzo is using his ultimate, he can also hit the people close up to him. I'm not really sure if that's exactly what they mean, but I guess Hanzo can now have like a little shotgun arrow that can just insta kill a tank if they get close to him. I don't know, I kind of like the alternate way to use Dragon Strike, so it's not for a giant dragon, but just for that small burst of damage, kind of like how McCree can cancel High Noon instantly just for a quick reload. It's kind of cool. I'm not really sure if it's a good idea to have a 600 damage headshot arrow to a tank, but I guess it's an ultimate. We'll go with it. We'll see how he does. Next up is Junker Queen, and Junker Queen doesn't even have a change. Her statue was just added to Ilias Ruins from that one event a while ago. There's really not that much to say about her. However, next up is Junkrat, and it looks like they reverted a few things. First off, they made it so his Frag Launcher does 130 damage instead of 120 again, and Concussion Mine can now do 120 damage again from 100. They said that after all these buffs, Junkrat was feeling a little underpowered, so they decided to go back on a couple of changes, including the Concussion Mine one and the Frag Launcher one. It looks like with these buffs, you'll be able to one-shot combo 250 HP heroes again. Yay! 
I personally think that buffing Junkrat is a really, really bad idea. This is just going to make him so nutty in the low ranks and still not be very good in the higher ranks. I personally think you'll just be seeing more Junkrats now that he's getting buffed because he can just one-shot 250 HP heroes. Next up is Kiriko. Her Kunai's body damage has been increased from 40 to 50, and her headshot damage has been decreased from 120 to 100. The devs say that a 3x multiplier on a headshot has proved to be a bit too lethal, so they decreased the headshot multiplier to 2 times, but they buffed her overall damage to compensate. Basically, Kiriko can still 2-tap headshot 200 HP heroes. However, she's going to be doing less damage overall by just headshotting. I'm not confident on how to feel right now because Kiriko is really, really good right now. So nerfing her kunai damage for people who can hit headshots is not the worst thing ever. I just maybe think they should have focused on a different part of her kit like Suzu, for example. But Kiriko is still going to be really good. And if you actually don't play Kiriko that much, this might actually just be a straight up buff for you. While if you play Kiriko a lot and can hit those headshots, it's going to be a noticeable nerf. Lucio. Crossfade speed boost has been decreased from 125 to 120. Sound barrier will now do 300 damage when landing on an enemy. They say that Lucio's speed boost makes him a must pick on maps like Control Point. So they nerfed his speed to hopefully open up the opportunity for other support heroes to shine. They also gave his sound barrier the crush from the creator patch. I personally think this nerf won't do much compared to the sound barrier buff. I think that reddit lucios are going to have a grand old time just slamming their beat on people's heads. Is this a good change? I'm not really sure, but it's definitely going to be a fun change, I know that one. Next up is Mei, and I'll tell you right now this is probably one of the worst changes that I've read so far. Endothermic Blaster, damage per second decreased from 100 damage per second to 50. However, it will now freeze enemies after 1.5 seconds of being froze. Mobility heroes have been the clear winners in Overwatch 2. In Season 4, we want to tone this back a bit. Bringing back Maze Freeze will put some hyper-mobility heroes in their place. Do you guys remember when I said this is going to feel like Overwatch 1 again? This is what I mean. I have not read past this point, by the way. I saw this one, and then I just started recording, because I wanted to get to this one. Why are they bringing back Maze Freeze? She worked actually pretty well how she is now. I think this is personally a terrible, terrible change, and I don't know how long it's going to last for. I guess for those of you who never played Mei in Overwatch 1, you'll get to experience what it feels like to get frozen and then headshot. Also, with less tanks and barriers, Mei's just going to run wild and it's going to suck, so... We better find the good counter to Mei, because we'll be seeing quite a lot of her. Luckily, Junkrat being able to one-shot her now will actually help. Maybe that's why they made Junkrat do more damage, but I don't know, it's a terrible change, let's just move on to Mercy. Mercy's Blaster now has 5 more bullets again. They buffed her ammo again. Mercy still has the lowest kill rate in the game. Increasing her ammo again should help her finish off eliminations. That is insane. That's the point of her character. Why are they giving her more bullets i don't need battle mercies in my games i would rather have a pocket discord kin that is insane they're also like combined with ash's buff that's gonna be so stupid i mean i guess it's it's really not gonna help her i guess i mean five more bullets is just five more bullets plus i guess her pulling out her pistol more will make it so ash doesn't get damage boosted as much but that is such an unnecessary change anyways we'll move on we'll move on Mora Fade can now be used while stunned. Dev comment. Mora has a large lack of utility compared to other supports. Since we are adding a few crowd control abilities back, letting Mora be the counter to them would give her that much needed utility. I mean, honestly, that's not the worst reason. I think Mora being able to fade while stunned is really, really dumb because when you're stunned, you're supposed to be stunned, not be able to use your abilities. That's the whole point of a stun. Mora being that exception, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea, but this change overall is just weird. I don't really think that Mora being able to fade while stunned is a good idea. However, however, it is true that they added back a few CCs, and you not being able to be woken up by enemies, and you being able to be frozen, and some other changes that I'm sure they added back. Mora being able to fade out of those stuns is not the worst thing ever, I guess. 
Orisa, new passive stallion. Damage heroes can now ride Orisa. Dev comments. Hanzo can finally live out his dream. So do I just go up to Orisa and then I'm guessing I press the interact button? That is amazing. All right, I'm going to take back a little bit of what I said. I think that this patch is amazing. Season 4 is going to be great. Hanzo is going to be the most played character alongside Orisa being the most played tank. But of course, we should probably get to the rest of the heroes because even though I think that's amazing, uh, we got other characters to get to. Farah, PC only change. Health decreased from 200 to 150, added 50 armor health. Dev comment Farah has been dominant on console but has been weak in PC lobbies. Having Farah have 50 armor in PC lobbies should give her the opportunities she needs to be efficient without buffing her against console players. Again, not the worst thing I've ever seen. I don't really like the idea of splitting PC and console lobbies. However, I guess it will be nice to not get instantly shot out of the sky on PC lobbies. At the same time though, Farah is already pretty good and I don't really think she needs this though. I've been saying since the beginning of this video that you'll be seeing a certain character more and more and I've just kind of realized that they're all getting a net buff pretty much or most of them I mean Echo got screwed over. So I would say that you'll be seeing more Farah but you might not be actually. I don't think this change will buff her that much especially in console lobbies where she's not even changed. Next up is Ramatra. Annihilation maximum duration increased from 20 to 30 seconds. Dev comment after removing the infinite timer. Annihilation started ending a little earlier than intended. Increasing the maximum duration should help solve that. So it looks like he still has a 3 second window before the ultimate ends. I think the reason they did this was because they wanted to make it so if you weren't hitting an enemy for very long, it wouldn't punish you as much while keeping the ultimate under like 20 seconds in total. So I think this change is intended for when you slightly miss someone and so you don't lose like 10 seconds of your ultimate just for missing a second of it. I don't really agree with that because I think Ramacha's ultimate is way too easy to use already. So making him more forgiving isn't exactly my favorite thing ever. Next up is Reaper and they changed his passive a little bit. Lifesteal percentage decreased from 35 to 30%. However now when you gain an elimination you'll gain 50 health points like you did back in the old days. Like really really old days. Reaper's passive is supposed to let him close the gap on enemies and survive afterwards. What ends up happening more often than not is he ends up taking too much damage after securing the elimination and then dies. Now you will have to be more efficient while dueling but you are also more likely to survive afterwards. I really don't mind this change. Reaper will kind of be like a snowball hero now. In order to get value you will have to get eliminations. It looks like it's not going to be like in the very very old days where you had those balls or whatever that he had to pick up. It looks like it's just going to be when you get an elimination, you get 50 health. Kind of like Genji's dash reset. So that one's kind of cool. Reinhardt! Fire strike damage decreased from 100 to 95. This basically just makes it so you cannot double fire strike someone. You can't one shot fire strike someone through a Baptiste ultimate. The devs say that he's basically just getting too many kills with his fire strike. And 100 damage is kind of a big deal in Overwatch 2 because... Two fire strikes will do two 100 damages so he can just two shot people. If Reinhardt shoots a fire strike through Baptiste's ultimate, he can just one shot 200 HP targets. So it looks like this is just so he doesn't insta kill people with two fire strikes. Roadhog. Scrap gun damage per pellet increased from 6 to 7. Roadhog has been underperforming ever since his hook was changed. This small damage boost should help him finish off eliminations. In the practice range I started testing this and Roadhog still cannot one shot most characters so I think this is going to be okay. However if you do really really good shots you'll be one shotting people more often than you should be. I don't really think it's a good idea to bring his one shot back. So they are just basically writing a fine line right now. Be careful because it looks like you can still get one shot sometimes. This isn't the greatest change ever. Figma Accretion. Damage increased from 100 to 110. Dev comment. Increasing the damage for accretion will allow Sigma to be more of a threat up close. This change doesn't seem like much, but actually you can now one shot 250 HP heroes. Again, I've noticed that a lot of the 250 HP heroes have been getting buffs, but then also people have been getting counters to those heroes by making those heroes be able to one shot them. Basically now when Sigma rocks you, he'll do 110 damage. 
His primary fire will do 55, then 55, so that's 220 damage. And then a melee will do 30, and so that's 250 damage, and that's a one-shot combo. So basically this buff is so Sigma can one-shot combo 250 HP heroes. Next up is Sojourn, Railgun Alt Fire, Maximum Damage Decrease from 130 to 100, Headshot Multiplier Change from 1.5 to 2 times. Just like Kiriko, we wanted to adjust the Headshot Multiplier to be 2 times. We increased the Headshot Multiplier while decreasing the maximum potential damage. There's only one issue with this. Sojourn can one-shot again. Oh boy! It looks like they did the exact reverse of what they did with Kiriko. Now if you don't hit a headshot, you'll just do 100 damage, while if you hit a headshot, you'll do 200. Uh, this is a terrible idea. We know what happens when Sojourn can one-shot, and I am not happy about this. I'm surprised I didn't say something about Widowmaker in this, because this looks like a Widowmaker counter. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think Sojourn could have already one-shot Widowmaker with her headshot, so I guess I was wrong about that. I don't want to dwell on this one for too long, because this one makes me sad, mad, well, all those words. So we're going to move on to Soldier 76. Soldier 76, Heavy Pulse Rifle, damage decreased from 18 to 15, recoil has been removed. Soldier's recoil has been difficult to balance, we decided to just completely remove the recoil and nerf the damage to compensate. No idea how this is going to play out. I kind of like the idea of recoil because it makes it so you kind of have to aim better, I guess. Most heroes have like a bullet spread, so there's no recoil. While Soldier and I think Baptiste are the unique ones with some sort of recoil. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I think Soldier is going to be a bit good and just he's going to laser people. He's going to kind of be doing less damage for people who can hit their shots while doing more damage for people who had trouble with the recoil. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Again, just like Sojourn, this is not the greatest change ever. Sombra, Stealth, can now contest objective while in stealth. Why? Dev comment, with more chip damage added to the game, it is common for Sombra to get a shot out of stealth, and if you're bad at the game. We decided to let her contest the objective while in stealth again. That is stupid. That is so freaking dumb! Imagine being able to infinitely go invisible and capture the objective. That is so dumb. Especially like with payloads where you can hide and like crouch behind it and translocate. Like on the control point, sure, you can just spin in a circle. But I guess there's some big control points where that's going to be a problem. But I don't know. This is going to be dumb. You're If you don't have like a some sort of spy check like D.Va or Zarya or just any beam character, Sombra's just going to sit there and just capture the objective. Very dumb change. I guess they at least they didn't make it so her speed was 175 again, but that is so dumb. I'm hoping that they're going to rework Sombra, so maybe this is in preparation for that? I don't know. Next up is Symmetra. General, health a decrease from 225 to 200. Sentry turret, turrets now heal teammates instead of damage. Heals for 40 health points per second. I thought they said they were never going to make Symmetra a healer. To this day, we still get suggestions to change Symmetra's turret to healing turrets. We have finally added this to prove it's a bad idea. Um, why, why? Wouldn't this be an experimental? So is this just like a sick joke to make it so she can heal? <laughs> what the heck? We're gonna have three healers on one team now. It's kind of odd. I don't know, maybe we should just move on to Torbjorn. Torbjorn, General. Torbjorn will now aim for you. Dev comment. We felt that it was unfair that Torb's turret had an aimbot. He also is a very high skill hero, therefore we let Torbjorn also use an aimbot? What? So Torbjorn just plays the game for you! I mean he already did that, but like now he plays it even more? That's dumb, I'm just gonna move move on, hang on, what's freaking next, what's next, what's next? Tracer, General, health increase from 150 to 200? Dev comment 150 is a weird number! So we buffed it to 200. This will hopefully make matchups between characters like Ash, who can one shot headshot her, feel more fair. Well, now she's gonna need a damage boost to headshot her and one shot her. <laughs> Why? I mean, I guess they made Torbjorn's turret aim for you, they made May be able to freeze you, they made freaking Ash one shot with her damage boost to Mercy. They made Sojourn one shot too, but why? I don't know. Moving on, Widowmaker. 
damage ramp up has been removed and will now do a flat 125 damage. Wait, hang on, doesn't that mean she can 200? That means she can quick scope and insta kill people? What? Why would they do this? They, they said they wanted to nerf Widow, not this! She can literally just quick scope anyone! Alright, alright. Alright, I'm just gonna, just gonna see if Winston's okay. Is, is my boy Winston okay? Let's see. His jump looks fine. His gun looks normal. I can still shoot that sign. That's that's good. Uh, his bubble. Where do, where does bubble go? Where? Winston. Ah! All right, let's. Wrecking Ball, are you are you good? General gameplay now represents a hamster. Dev Summit, it's hamster time. <laughs> Sorry, uh, General. Removed because women don't exist. Dev comment, they just don't. Anyways, I guess that's not the it's not the worst change. I mean, women don't exist. I guess we'll just we'll just look at Zenyatta. I mean, at least they did a good change. Women don't exist. Anyways, Zenyatta, general. I am the them. Alright, so before this video goes on for too much longer, yes, this was an April Fool's prank, but I hope you guys really, really enjoyed it because I had a lot of fun making it, making these dumb changes that I tried to make look believable, but then I sprinkled in a few that were very, very not believable to the point of where people would know it was a joke, but I also wanted to try and trick a couple people, especially if you clicked off the video. Like, imagine someone clicked off a video as soon as they saw the Zenyatta one, and then now the whole Overwatch community thinks that Zenyatta's pronouns are now they, them. I think that's hilarious. So I hope you guys share this around because I want to kind of trick people to see how many people we can trick into thinking that this patch note is real. But again, I purposely made some obvious, so I don't expect that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.